Hey everybody and welcome to A Gay View. We have our panelists, McCaffrey, host of The Goings On. We have Jamie with Jamie Laurie Photography and we have Miss Nebula Child. She is a lounge singer and also a performer. And then we have Angelique Young. And today we are going to be talking about a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about racism in the gay community. Um, and how we go about bringing awareness to this issue. Now, what's really interesting is this is something that I wasn't really aware of, so I really need you guys to let me know. What, what, what's going on with racism in the gay community? Well, I, I'm sorry. I, I was kind of shocked when you told me you, didn't, you weren't aware of it because it's so prevalent. I personally feel like the gay community is the most racist, prejudiced community that there is. We are constantly begging for equality, but yeah, I can't find equality in my brother or sister, whether they're gay or straight or femme or whatever it is it's a it's an issue it's definitely an issue I I have been asked I have I have been shunned due to me being a black when it comes to finding a boyfriend many many times so I it, it, it's very prevalent to me how do you feel about that, Jamie? I think not only race has to do with it in the gay community, like it's all types of labels that we put on each other. We have too mass, too femme, uh, she does drag, she's trans, mm -hmm. like there's so many more things besides race that there's prejudice for. And I feel like so many people in our community are putting themselves in a box because they're not open-minded to what else could be out there. There's you're too big, you're too small, you're a cub, you're a twink. It's yeah, just it's so many different labels that we have and mm -hmm. it's crazy to me that so many people stick themselves in that box. Hmm. What about you, Nebula? Racism is also prevalent in the trans community, especially with trans doctors and healthcare. It's, it's hard to find certain healthcare if you're a certain race sometimes because some, some doctors are very you know, they, they, they can be very, very shady, you know, when it, when it comes to health care and finding hormones or when it, when, it, when it comes to, you know, social, social um, gatherings where people talk about um, finding, finding services and everybody says that black, black trans girls or trans girls of color are always um, being escorts, you know, which is not always the case, so. That, that's a very interesting experience. So what about you, Angelique? Um, in my experience, actually, I find that both as an entertainer in the industry that we find it not only in the bars that we attend, but the nights that are designated, as if we're only supposed to come to, let's say, a hip-hop night is supposed to be a designated black night, or a Latin night is a designated Hispanic night. These nights are set up specifically to give us an outlet to hang out with each other. But then when you come to these events, you come to find out that the people in that room aren't necessarily accepting of their own kind, let alone of the ideal of being cattle and herded into one night. And that's been in my experience. And then on top of that, you have these apps like Jack, Grinder, Scruff, all those things, and they, they allow you to nitpick as to what your quote-unquote preference is. But if it was just a preference, why is it such a problem to talk to someone who is of a different race or a different color, or a problem to associate with those kinds of things? A lot of times we see people in these groups and they don't necessarily have an open mind. So, I mean, it's really relevant. I mean, anytime you go into a bar, I mean, take a closer look at your groupings of people and how they interact with each other or the way they interact when somebody stands next to them at the bar. A lot of times it's the age old question, you know, the black man walks down the street and the woman grabs her purse or pulls her kid a little closer. It's the same thing in the gay community. When we get to the bar, depending on how you look, whether you're femme, you're big, you're bare, scruff, whatever, um, people tend to react differently to you. It's just something that I've been very visual about. Okay, let me let me just put it in perspective for those of you who, who aren't aware. Just look at your gay mags. Just look at your gay mags. When you see those gay mags and you see these big, buff, handsome guys, how many times do you see anybody of color? And when you see someone of color, they're put in a very fetish way, like the Latin or the black. And, 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 and it, it's like that we're not human, we're dehumanized because we are fetish. And that is, that is the issue. Look through your gay mags out at advocate all of them now I kind of see that now that we thank God for Obama I think that does has made a change but even in the gay community you do not see advertisements for people even a Asian people how many times have you seen a hot Asian guy and they're not in the fetish role it, we work in the bar industry so a lot of times our dancers get scrutinized too you know they have to be a certain type for a certain night it's very rare in a lot of our local bars right now that you see uh, an African-American or an Asian 
in the bar right now who is built or who looks nice and they're you're made to feel like you're like you're a specialty like you're not you're not just one of anybody unless it's a special night so it's something that's like she said it, it, you're made to feel like a commodity like a special rare little thing but on the other hand of that what is the point in being something that's special or rare if you're only given your you know your accolades when one specific night comes along in a week or when one specific event we should be seen thoroughly throughout I mean I hate to say it it's kind of like you know um, equal opportunity for employment it's the same thing with drag queens if there's too many black girls in a show people don't want to come because it's a black cast it doesn't matter who started the cast or how it started it's just about who who is there when people come in it doesn't matter all of a sudden our entertainment value is devalued we know how hard we've worked in the community get that booking or that spot no longer matters we're, we're a number we're a statistic so it becomes an issue and that's only something that I personally have seen happen in bars recently um, even with girls on Latin showcases and stuff like that people are like oh well we were hoping for a, a white girl this time or you know or a black girl or somebody else something different that is crazy crazy to me because if we all if, and, and we're whether we're black or white we're all programmed that if we see our all older white men we don't think nothing of it if they're in a position of, of, of entertainment or they're in a position of a CEO and it's just all white men we don't think anything of it but if it's all Latin or if it's all black immediately we've been programmed to say why is that and I think that's part of the problem the gay community we're looking for acceptance you want acceptance equality starts with you it starts right here you want the world to accept you accept your brothers and sisters you know I, I've been racking my brain on a solution to how can we fix this in our community um, and the only thing that I could come up with in the last few days was that we have to get rid of these blanket statements and these constructs that we put people in to the point of excluding others where everyone can be included in a group and I I still don't know how to fix it but I'm hoping that one day we can and thank you very much for tuning into a gay view catch our next segment <laughs>